when we launched the first product every other app that you've seen right you put a icon of share comment yeah. like people didn't know what that means i used to see a lot of competitor apps use translator and they would say follow us picha kare and people were like scared in india like picha why 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 will somebody follow me so so i think that is essentially bharat right these people used to have like a very badly photoshopped photo yeah. with like modi ji their name will if it's akash it's not be normal akash it'll be capital a small k at the rate and then some emojis and these were not kids these were 30 year old men yeah. from k to t three towns behaving like how i behaved in my teenage and yeah. i have an orkut when you enter a live stream and you get a ferrari coming in a ferrari yeah. animation people are willing to pay for that so there's a streamer uh, she had a medical emergency at her house you went to a live stream on mods and collected 1.3 lakhs okay. through these 10 20 30 rupees micro tips this narrative that tier 1 is where all the in- disposable income is and k to tier 3 is where you don't have is not the truth after tiktok sort of gone banned and hello also got banned But tell us about that story right what led to its ban i mean they were hi This is Siddharth Aluwalia and welcome to the Neon Show. Our guest failed 17 times as a founder and yet he never gave up. On his 18th attempt, he eventually founded a 40,000 crore startup in 2015. Today, his company has over 350 million monthly active users and is India's largest social media app. It's my pleasure to welcome ShareChat founder Ankush Sachdeva. on the show i would also like to thank our sponsors prime venture partners for sponsoring the neon show hope you enjoy it yankush ah uh, super welcome to neon show i'm so excited to have you today thank you siddharth i've known you <laughs> i've known you for for 8 years closely seen your journey right i remember coming to your first office in kolmangla mm. opposite forum mall Mm-hmm. Right, that was what a hundred seater office that you had. Yeah, probably hundred seater. Yeah, you had a cricket pitch inside your office. Yeah. <laughs> Those were fun days. We had a pitch literally in the middle of the office uh, where all of us just hung out. Uh, yeah. where, where is the new office? Right. So we've actually moved two offices after that. The newest one is in Sarjapur Road. Okay, uh, that's about a five hundred seater that we have. Got it. Yeah. And that office was like in two thousand fifteen. Yes, I imagine. Yes, right? and in two thousand fourteen you graduated from IIT. Yeah, we graduated, and for the first one year or eight months, we were in fact in Mumbai. Okay. Uh, and we didn't have an office or a house. Uh, we used to sleep in one of our friends' startup office, and used to go to one of our investors' office to work. Uh, so sleep at the, the, the friend's office and go to uh, investors' office for work. Uh, I think once uh, while we were on that journey, yeah. that incubator journey, uh, we got our first check of fifty lakh rupees yeah. at that point. and that is when we moved to bangalore okay and got our first office and that was also that was uh, the one office no it was it was our in fact third office in bangalore okay our first office was a 3 bhk yeah uh ground floor we used to work uh first floor we used to all sleep it was our house yeah uh we realized maintaining an independent house in bangalore is a lot of work yeah. uh, you have to <laughs> figure out electricity water turn yeah. on the pump for kaveri water all of that so we thought we'll move to a better managed office yeah. we did that and then finally we came to the one that that you sort of had had seen mm-hmm. uh, eventually even then we did not have a house in bangalore so we used to sleep in that office i think it's only in 2017 that me fred and bhanu the three co-founders we got a house okay. and finally sort of settled into a normal <laughs> normal life after that but but uh, you guys started it out of your college right the, yes and how many versions or pivots that you made before you arrived at share chat see we uh met at a hackathon yeah. me farid and bhanu we there used to be we were in the same batch in it no i was 2011 they were 2010 i mean when we went into the college yeah. so i was one year junior uh, to them we met at this event called yahoo hack you yeah uh, it happened in 2012 so my yeah. second year their third year and we were like there were like several winning teams we were two of them there was one team that i was sort of in and and there was one team yeah. farid bhanu and their, their friends were there we met at that event after winning yeah. or after the conclusion of the event and that is when we gelled together and we like there is some frequency that is matching we love building products yeah. so why not like we build products together and uh, we tried several things so if you look at our name it's mohalla tech private limited yeah. that's because our first product was mohalla.in it was a real estate product okay this was the time when housing and all yeah. was all the rage uh, we were trying to build uh, this this real estate company 
uh, that didn't go anywhere because i think yeah. building it out of kanpur was which not, year was this this is 2012 in your second year in my second year uh so that didn't work but we thought we'll build a data analytics company because all these consumer facing real yeah. estate companies will need some yes. uh, intelligent data backing and, and backend systems so we started building a data analytics company yeah. and we thought we'll get the first customer as delhi police yeah uh because i think there was there was a recent ruling there where you delhi police had to put all their fir's into yeah. a public uh, sort of website and we thought we can build a really good product showing how crime is happening across delhi how it is trending and we'll pitch it to delhi police in yeah. fact we went to delhi police headquarters so me and farid we just took a train kanpur to delhi with no sort of yeah. appointments landed there and started asking ki hame commissioner se mila do <laughs> <laughs> to the, to the to police yeah, yeah we went to the police headquarters and and the pn is like aise nahi milte sir matlab <laughs> we have to <laughs> take an appointment but like you look at the product <laughs> like and we showed the product there's a map of delhi yeah. uh, where is chain theft happening where is other crimes happening and he, he got really excited he's like this looks really good you go to the bade saab the, yeah. the next uh, uh, officer the sub inspector sh- or sub inspector yeah again same story <laughs> sir we have come from iit we want to do something for this country please allow yeah. us to meet the commissioner is like that can't happen is like look at the product i again we again yeah. pitch the product so we kept doing that until the evening we managed to get a meeting with the additional commissioner okay. of police uh and he got really impressed and we got the project oh nice so we got a project that you have to build this uh, with with certain specifications he said we'll fund it we went back to college built a 16 member team okay so your be- your top guys in programming club became our engineering team your best guys of antaragni the cultural festivals yeah. and all became the marketing team so we built that 16 member team we used to work out of our computer science yeah. building lounge uh used to put like all night yeah. outs every every time just camping there it seems one of the professors got pissed yeah and complained to the dean <laughs> okay and the three of us get called to dean's office and they're like uh, you're technically not allowed to run a startup in in college back, back then in yeah. iit kanpur uh and they claim that we are giving some salary and sort of spoiling the academic yeah. performance which was untrue because we're not paying salaries yeah but anyways they said there will be some uh senate inquiry on you and all the other folks who were in the team their parents got called okay. that your son or daughter is doing something this is 11 years ago like college is making doing a startup a crime yeah <laughs> and they got so again they all left uh thankfully we had not made any payments right so so we got approved by the senate uh but our team got sort of destroyed yeah. and that's but the three of us i think stayed together and that made our bond even stronger yeah I think we kept building products. So what happened uh, to that one, the police product? Two things: one, our team got destroyed. Second, you had a change of government. That's the time when Aam Aadmi Party okay. came to Delhi. Okay. So I think that commissioner got transferred. Uh, so we got we lost the project, also the team. Yeah. So there was no point uh, following that path. And then we changed. I think pivoted multiple times. In the middle, there was also this time when we built. uh the most popular dating product of id kanpur we called it puppy love okay puppy love it is in fact still live <laughs> okay uh, i was in fact yesterday it came in my one of the older mail somebody was committing changes even now so it was a product that we built and launched in valentines day okay to allow campus students to fill their crush yeah. list and on 14th feb 6 pm we'll anonymously match yeah. and show if there was a match uh, between your crush and, and you So this is like Mark Zuckerberg when he created Facebook in 2000. Probably, <laughs> probably. Our, ours was a very different concept, though. Uh, and and but I think when we launched it, so before launching, I actually talked to about ten women. Yeah. Because it was like men will definitely fill yeah. the crush list. Will women? Will, will will women participate in this? Yeah. Supply is the most important. Yeah. <laughs> and I talked to ten women. All of them said said this makes no sense. We will not yeah. uh, use the product. But to our surprise, when the product got launched. about half the campus signed up including women okay and we had about 42 matches coming out of it Go on on valentines day and it was a huge success i when i used to sort of when when that was launched and i went to like a lecture yeah. a lecture hall i could hear people saying ki bhai tune puppy love bhara ki nahi bhar <laughs> there was like this is the most happening thing in the campus okay. at that point i think those were the incidents where we really felt at least i personally got a lot of kick out of seeing something that we've built is having so much impact yeah. around us and i think that sort of that feeling kept us going despite all the failures yeah. till we landed on on this uh, understanding of content and and eventually building shares and uh, somehow your dna uh 
got built around for a social product as a founder because all your products were somehow social in nature i mean when you are a college grad you don't know anything better yeah. <laughs> so i mean if you if you ask a college grad to build a b2b saas company is yeah. going to fail like they don't like we had no experience yeah. no working experience so i think we saw problems around us uh, and we built for that yeah uh, and tell us about the insight right because you mentioned that several products got built till you landed on a share chat right yeah. so so what was the insight that Uh, so we were uh, building a product called Opinio yeah. before Chat Chat. It was a debating platform uh, where you could have Virat versus Sachin uh, in a website, yeah. and you expect users to come in and debate uh, in favor or against uh, each player, right? And at the end, whoever gets most engagement sort of wins the debate. And this was product number. Thirteen, I guess. Okay, <laughs> so, so every product got two months shelf life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 were like, in fact, our first investors were very scared that these guys just chuck away ideas too quickly. <laughs> so that their their concern was, will you stick with the idea for too long? Uh, but I think we were of the mode that you build fast, fail fast, and figure like get your learnings and then move on. Yeah. Uh, so I think while we were building that product, um, I was in my fourth year in my campus and I was trying to spam the link of yeah. this uh, like a debate. Yeah. So I, I think I took a Sachin debate and tried to post it in Sachin fan club. There used to be like millions of uh, members, uh, public Facebook groups uh, around Sachin. So I used to I, I went there started spamming in the hope that people will click and then we'll we'll get some yeah. uh, uh, liquidity because we had no money to mar- yeah. do marketing right. In one of those groups I saw there was a post which was a Sachin ka uh, photo with a WhatsApp logo yeah. and the guy is saying अगर आपको Sachin का content चाहिए तो अपना phone number डाले if you want content around Sachin yeah. put your phone number and I I lied you to a WhatsApp group and below that there were like fifty thousand people putting their phone numbers. and i was like how is this making any sense why are people putting their phone number yeah in the hope that somebody will add them to a whatsapp group yeah. and they will get content uh, but out of curiosity i sort of scraped thousand phone numbers put that in my phone made 10 whatsapp groups yeah uh, and named them like such and photos videos all of that and i kept my phone and went down for lunch it was like yeah. afternoon in in uh, the campus so I went down had lunch yeah. in the canteen came back One hour later, when I come back, I I open my door. My phone is on that table, constantly beeping with notifications. I pick up the phone, and every single WhatsApp group that I had formed had hundreds of hundred messages around such it. Okay. And a guy would say, "Ki bhai, Shah Jahan ki video bhej." Another guy would instantly send that video. Yeah. So they were literally sharing content on on such a popular topic and not going to your usual suspects, right? Not yeah. going to Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. And the irony was they were on Facebook, but sharing a WhatsApp number to get content on WhatsApp. Yeah. So, so I think this insight made us feel that in 2014, this was 2014 November timeframe. Your fourth year. My fourth year. Uh, one month before placement. Okay. So we're like in this 2014 sort of timeframe. How is it so hard for people to find content yeah. that they are doing all this? And maybe there's an opportunity to build a simple platform which will give them all this content. And yeah. and we one of the observation observation was everybody was talking in Hindi, Tamil, Malayalam, all regional languages. Yeah. you could you could understand that they are not your typical metro users so maybe there's a need for for a platform which aggregates only regional content and that is how we came about building yeah. share chat cool and what was the next step after you you know build this whatsapp groups so i think first when the discovery happens um, i had to make an important decision of to sit in the placements or not okay <laughs> even before you get to product yeah. building right uh that is a very important juncture had i chosen the yeah. other path we yeah. would not be having this podcast probably uh but i think that irrational optimism that you have as an entrepreneur yeah. i was like ki it hasn't worked that like the first 13 times the 14th will work yeah and with that sort of irrational optimism i took a train again went to mumbai because my co-founders had yeah. already graduated and yeah. they were in, in mumbai and i think once i went there i also showed the same phenomena yeah. of what is happening in facebook groups uh i think we were all excited um and the first thing we did was we believed uh people are using whatsapp because uh that is the only app that works in the patches of networks yeah. and we were in east up right kanpur yeah. we had seen the worst of the networks the, the 2g works so horribly this was before jio before jio so the reason they are using whatsapp is actually one of the parts is it's it's, it's easy to understand yeah. but it is the only app which works on yeah. patchy 2g So let's build a simple product which will be public chat rooms, very similar looking to WhatsApp, yeah. 
but not on HTTP backend, like not built like a normal app, built like a chat app, yeah. but for content. Uh, and and it also solves the purpose that you don't have to share phone numbers. It is a public chat room sort of service. Right? So you can actually go and search such in group and yeah. you'll find it. So so we started with that. Uh, the first version we launched, uh, we again made all public yeah. celebrities, wallpapers, all of that uh, as the first group. We yeah. used to call it Share Chat Red. Uh, what we saw was uh, one people were not interested in the chat part of the chat room. So we thought that they'll come, they'll share content, but they'll also form a community yeah. around their favorite actor or actress, whatever, right? They were not interested in that. They, all they cared about was give me that wallpaper, give me that ringtone, give me that joke yeah. and I'll go away. Uh, we also saw that we had English as an option, yeah. but nobody, like people, like more than half the people clicked English, but the people who clicked English had very terrible engagement on the platform. And when we used to call up these people, like the people who picked English, right, to understand like the product is not that bad, why would you not use it? We would say, hi, hello, till that is fine. And because that picked English, we would imagine they'll speak English, right? Yeah. They could not speak beyond hi and hello. They had no working vocabulary of English. They did not know the language. Yet when given an option, they will pick that language. Okay. Because of aspirational reasons. And in fact, there was a lot of trust deficit. A lot of these regional language apps in the past had always been these betting scams yeah. and all of these things. So there was a lot of trust deficit in any Hindi language yeah. app. Uh, but we got to know that people really want regional language, but they will not tell you if you just yeah. put a menu in front of them. So with that sort of understanding, we built a few variants, but eventually we came to the conclusion, we will not have English as an option and we will only show a content feed. Yeah. No sort of chatting uh, in the middle. And, and that is how the current form of shared chat came about. And uh, people could produce wallpapers. So so it was initially it was all uh, WhatsApp group admins essentially. Yeah. In fact, the WhatsApp groups that we had started with, right? Those were the initial source of all the content okay. that we had. So, so the, for the first six months, we did not allow people to upload. Okay. It was only the WhatsApp group admins who were there who were cross posting on WhatsApp and shared chat. It was after six months is when we allowed UGC because this was like very operational. Yeah. We used to like build scrapers, keep the admins motivated to keep cycling yeah. content. So it was very simple. They just they'll see a feed of content yeah. created on the WhatsApp. Yes. So so it was after six months when we on the share chat app allowed yeah. people to upload. Yeah. And it the, the content exploded after that. So within a week of launch, the content that was uploaded every day yeah. was more than all the content like posted in the in the entire yeah. history of the product. So once we launched, allowed people to upload content, the platform just took off uh, in terms of creation post that. Wow. And you know, uh, there's a lot of debate today that India versus Bharat, create for Bharat versus create for India. Mm -hmm. What What is that about? What are these two segments of a single country? <laughs> It's not like India versus Pakistan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, I think when we say that, it is usually people who have been very, very exposed to Western products, Western yeah. way of thinking for several years versus who are very new to the internet. In fact, uh, I, I think the way this played out, right? When we launched the first product, we, like every, every other app that you've seen, right? You put an icon of share, comment, yeah. like, people didn't know what that means. Uh, we, we we used to like we had a I remember you in in your app it was written in Hindi yes, share <laughs> yes exactly we had to write uh, we very very ver verbose that this is actually share yeah. this is like it's written in Hindi <laughs> yes and and that made a lot of difference because people did not understand uh, in fact I used to see a lot of the com competitor apps use translator and they would say follow us picha kare Hmm. And people were like scared in India. Like, why, why, why will somebody follow me? So, so I think that is essentially Bharat, right? They're much newer in their sort of journey. Yeah. And how big is the uh, population which is newer? In this journey? See, I think roughly we split as top 100 million and the rest of about 500 so million. Out of the 140 crore population, the 10 crore is the one which is called India and the rest 130. Yeah, is Bharat. roughly. Yes. Yes. Even on, on the internet, you'll, you'll probably have 10 crores and about 50, 60 crores, right? Uh, of, of Bharat. And how did you discover, let's say, the, the, the first insight that, hey, we are not creating for India, we are creating for Bharat? In fact, honestly, we did not have that, <laughs> that, that way the of describing. What we knew was that our audience does not sit in metros. Yeah. It is predominantly in tier two, tier three yeah. uh, sort of markets. They are very new to the internet. So in fact, uh, I had this very interesting observation. So when I formed that WhatsApp group site of, of that Sachin, I actually went to my contact section in WhatsApp. Yeah. So you could see everybody's DP, yeah. right? 
they were my friends uh, who had a normal name and and photograph these people used to have like a very badly photoshopped photo yeah. with like modi ji huh. you can make out it's, it's yeah. like a badly photoshopped image their name will if it's akash it's not be normal akash it will be capital a small k at the rate and then some emojis and these were not kids these were 30 year old men yeah. from k to t3 towns behaving like how i behaved in my teenage and high five in orkut so so in terms of biological age they were 30 but they were so new to the internet they were doing things that we probably did as yeah. as a india sort of cohort right when we were in in our there teenage is an interesting insight that these people thought that they are invisible on internet right so if you ask them to let's say sit in a group of 10 and share such an images or comment mm-hmm. on that they will sit silent hmm. but the real expression for them happened on yeah. internet I, and i think that, that that still holds right these people in their real lives in in a lot of context are very apprehensive not as expressive but on the internet they suddenly feel a lot of freedom yeah and 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 i think the the insight we got even from whatsapp group admins right why do people become whatsapp group admins it is to become the coolest part of their community it's like being a sarpanch of their community yeah and 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 to show that i am forward i know internet and i'm cool yeah so the number one motivation of being a whatsapp group admin at that time at least was to be the coolest member of my okay. group and can you say that uh, the the new members from tier 2 tier 3 cities which were joining share chat coming on internet uh, uh, they were they cared about status so much hmm. like much more than you know the the india hmm. for example this is the group where you know inter caste marriages don't happen mm. are looked down upon mm. even youth say you know how can a hindu marry a muslim mm. right and on in- internet these are the people who are expressing themselves freely mm. and they they know that inter- and one, one one other thing was they never put on internet their real name mm. right i remember mm. uh, now it might have changed yeah, but yeah. initially when they joined they they thought this is a invisible layer hmm. they'll spend tons and tons of time on it i mean they they did feel a, a security better <laughs> sense of security versus in, a, a in better self world. image on internet probably yeah right because at least why would they would somebody uh, a 30 year old male who has kids uh, you know try I to think, be somebody more i think they they there is an inherent need as you said that status driven thing And, and how does that status come right they want to show that they are different they are cool and they know how to use internet just yeah. the fact that they know different features makes their status higher in their community yeah. and that is why you you find these guys using more, much more emojis and in different sort of yeah. uh, fonts right even their names are in emojis yes yes and and i think it holds today as well because one of the ways we monetize on shatter is is through live stream gifting right yeah. it is nothing but status So for a profile badge around your profile photo people are willing to pay. When you enter a live stream and you get a Ferrari coming in a Ferrari right. animation people are willing to pay for that. That is again to look very different. Among the crowd I am different. I I think that that continues even today. And on the platform. For example people would try to look cooler with people that they know. For example if I live in a village and there are 100 people I would try to buy a new car let's mm. say at that point in time. a hyundai i10 or mm. i20 to to look much more superior mm-hmm. but why would they care an, among anonymous people among strangers you you're right and therefore we see this more pronounced in live streams where you uh, are you have been a part for for a long time so the host knows you the other stream listeners know you and the fact that a large influencer is calling your name when you yeah. come in that is the kick and they they pay for it yes they pay for it <laughs> influencer calling yes. out no no not not for the influencer calling but because they've been uh, gifting so much influencer yeah. gets to know them yeah so so in that known circle of my favorite live streamer and the listeners i want to inflate my status so it is in fact when if you are playing the status game it it is far more impactful if it ha- happens in that known small group of people yeah so so in in the digital world it is that small live stream community that you've built got it Uh, and uh, for example right india is one of the poorest countries by gross domestic domestic produce right mm-hmm. uh, that our average income for a for a, a, a indian among 140 crores population mm-hmm. or 1.4 billion mm-hmm. population is just 2000 dollars per mm-hmm. year like nothing like 1.6 lakhs yeah. per year, per mm-hmm. year or 20 15000 yeah. or 12000 rupees 
common. But these are the people that are paying on share chat. Yes. Yeah, I think this is a very uh, uh, hotly discussed topic, right? That you have this Bharat audience, large in numbers. People call them Dow Farm, Mao Farm. Yeah. How do they make money? Or like, how will they make money? So for audience, Dow is daily active users. Mao, Mao is, is monthly, monthly active, active users. users. Yeah. So um, I think that is true. And therefore, a lot of businesses that you see getting formed on tier one will take their own sweet time to get into the, yeah. the, the so-called Bharat cohort, right? But I believe media is not one of those. A media business, I can share like a rough uh, breakup of how the sure. costing works, right? So we have two products, both 100 plus million MAUs. So we, we, we're operating at that scale where we know yeah. how the economies of scale will work yeah. and, and things will look, right? It takes about $1 or 80 rupees per DAU per year just to serve the audience. So when you're serving the audience, they're essentially coming to share chat, fetching a feed, consuming videos, commenting, whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever activity they're doing. For us to sustain that for an year, it costs a server cost of 80 rupees. Per $1 user. per user. Per so, user per year. Which is like $100 million you have to invest. Yes. So if you have $100 million DAUs, just to sustain that audience, yeah. you have to pay $100 million to your cloud provider or your own, if you have a private cloud. Yeah. But you have to pay $100 million per year. Now that is the biggest serving cost. You have other other uh, fixed cost as well but this is the this is probably for any social media company about 70 80 percent of the cost yeah now how do you recover that how do you make revenue out of that facebook in india makes about six dollars per year per dau yeah. in terms of ads revenue so that is you can probably say that's the ceiling of the market because yeah. they're the most scaled out ads business including instagram in, including fb blue ig and these are the yeah. two large yeah. monetized products um so that is their current number now you can see the gap, right? If, if it only takes $1, but it, you can theoretically make $6, it is a great business to be in. Mm -hmm. Now you can argue Facebook IG has a coverage across the country, right? So take a haircut, maybe take $3. But even at one and three, there's a huge margin yeah. business that can be built. Now what we figured was, this is a great business, but we will also go and invest in a, another stream, which is micropayments, yeah. which will give us another equal, equally large ARPU yeah. pool to sort of uh, monetize. Uh, ARPU is average, average revenue, revenue per, per user. user. So, so my argument is that even though the per capita is small, the discretionary income is, is sort of lower yeah. for this cohort, but the, the variable input cost is just a dollar per year. You can easily make that much amount with ads and then further through life. Yeah. So the first profitable Bharat business would actually be a social media business. If you think about it from yeah. that phase, right? So, so I'm, I'm, the, the argument is correct and therefore very high ticket value transaction businesses probably will take more time to scale to Bharat. Yeah. But we are not operating in that way. We literally charge 10 rupees for a micropayment. Okay. And ad is anyways driven by uh, B2B uh, uh, advertisers, right? So. Uh, I think we are pretty confident that you can actually monetize this audience and, and build a profitable business on top of it. Got it. And, you know, uh, uh, I assume everyone listening to this podcast would be surprised that each app that they consume is spending on an average $1 on to maintain yes. them yes. <laughs> per year. So if you have 100, 100, 100 apps in your phone, uh, somebody's... You yeah, know, collective uh, spend is hundred dollars. Hundred content apps for sure. I, I can I can guarantee any social media app. Uh, if, if you're consuming, you're somebody is paying a dollar for you, for for your years of usage, one year which, of usage, which, which is almost like uh, for you to own a eight thousand rupees smartphone. And if you have hundred free apps on it, mm. somebody is paying for you to be on that smartphone and use those apps eight thousand rupees collectively. Yes, I mean for social media, yes, but yeah, you can generalize it. But yeah, I think I think uh, uh, folks. I mean, if it's a utility app, it's yeah. lesser usage. Uh, but social media is, is definitely that. Like you have been a, uh, you know, con let's say an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur thrive on insight, right? What What's your insight of like, how have Indian consumers evolved since 2015 and both online and offline? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a general behavior of consumers, mm. not anything in, you know, will not say. Yeah, I think I can, I can share probably a social media perspective, right? Of how yeah. we've seen. So there was this very interesting thing which happened in 2016, yeah. one year uh, into building Share Chat. There was some joke around a community in Gujarati, yeah. which went viral on WhatsApp. And when content goes viral on WhatsApp from Share Chat, we usually put a watermark of Share Chat. Yeah. We literally had a protest and stone pelting at our office. In 
in Kormangla, okay. that office. And the reason was those guys thought it is some magazine which is publishing content, a joke against the community. So, so people didn't even know what social media was back then. They thought all content comes from a magazine, a newspaper, and yeah. therefore we protest and, and we get our things. Eventually, people did realize that how social media works, it is some individual mm. who's sort yeah. of posting, and we're also not going to reveal the information. Yeah. You, If a valid authority gives us an FIR, then yeah. top, we, could, we could comply, right? Now, imagine from, a, from that world to today, where anybody could share anything relatively more, more freely, right? People have a much more sense of freedom expressing themselves online. Versus what they had uh, in 2015. That's one part of it. The other part is uh, people are, I think it is far more democratic for people to just showcase their talent yeah. uh, on the platform. right? I think this, this podcast is one of those yeah. examples, right? It is so easy to start a podcast now. You have to work hard to make it big, but yeah. the fact that you can start it yes. is, is very liberating, yeah. right? Um, I think that part, that part did not exist in, in 2015. We have had... Creators on Moj, uh, there was one guy, some Rohan Shetty, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, he started creating content on Moj, yeah. accumulated about 5 million followers. A Kannada producer saw him and gave him a lead role okay. in a movie. Now that sort of opportunity could not have existed 5 years ago. Yeah. So the fact that you have scaled out platforms where you can express yourself, showcase your content, I think that is one of the biggest things that has happened. Uh, through social media, so through internet. As a, as a theme, uh, India has become more tolerable since 2015. More expressive for sure. But but for, for expression to thrive, you need a tolerable with country. Ex expressive with lesser uh, consequences for an individual. Another important thing is that uh, digital infrastructure that got created in India, social media, share chat, UPI, right? Uh, and now you know, uh, Aadhaar hmm. led to UPI. I think that has made India more democratized than physical infrastructure, right? For example, a, a person from village will still hesitate to go into a mall. Mm -hmm. I still feel that mm -hmm. because he wouldn't say, hey, this is the first time entering. Entry. But for, for them to go, in, he or she to go into onto internet to watch mm. YouTube, mm. they feel relaxed. It's not mm. like... Yeah, I, I mean, th that is true. Uh, the digital infrastructure has definitely moved very, very fast to the point that we are now claiming numbers like we are doing more digital transactions than any other country. Yeah. So we are not just like trying to catch up. We've beaten in, in some aspects yeah. the, the world in digital infra. Physical infra, I think we, are, we know all our problems in the country, which makes it slower. But you're right, like digital infra has moved at a speed no nobody thought. Uh, and, and I think you mentioned UPI, yeah. uh, the pace at which we see micropayments growing, despite all the headwinds and, and I think ads in general is facing a lot of headwinds with, with macros, right? We don't see any headwinds in micropayments. Okay. Consumers are paying for that 10 rupee, 20 rupee transaction like it is. Your, your micropayment revenue is more than your ad revenue? It is now crossed. Okay. In fact, because it started later, but it is now crossed because it's growing much faster. Okay. Uh, and we're in fact seeing on the other side, right? like the, the, the host, we have about, I think, uh, about half a million host, live stream host on the platform. We see the top 25% of them make somewhere around 75,000 to a lakh rupees a month. Okay. So it's become, it's a full time fact, job. It's a full time job. Uh, and we've seen a lot of stories of, I think there was a, there was a streamer. She did not have, uh, she had a medical emergency at her house. Yeah. She went to a live stream on Moj and collected 1.3 lakhs okay. through these 10, 20, 30 rupees yeah. micro tips uh, and, and sort of got her uh, medical thing done. Uh, so I think we, we are seeing the digital infra move at very different pace and that is allowing these business models, which I would have never imagined that we would be so fast on micro payment. Like it will take its own sweet time. But I think this is allowing a lot of these business models to thrive, yeah. which otherwise would have taken a, a much longer time in, in the country. I, I think the, the great part of, I think about share chat is like, uh, you know, half of your revenue comes from micro payments. So you don't mm -hmm. have to depend on advertisers. Like yes. in, in one of the in, uh, recent interviews, uh, Ellen Musk said F you <laughs> 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 to advertisers. He, he, he's technically our investor. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to trust the investor. Yes. In yes. Uh, right so, so that that's quite a bold statement 
yeah i mean that's a that's a pretty bold statement and and you don't expect anything less yeah. from elon musk so yeah. uh, said, if you don't want to advertise you can't blackmail him <laughs> yeah yeah that's his way of dealing with it <laughs> yeah so now now tell us here you know more about share chart as a as a company right if you can disclose what are the revenues how far are you away from profitability what do you think of sure reaching those milestones yeah yeah i think uh, i think it's also important to share uh, a brief context right yes. of, of what it does what does it take to build a social yeah. media company as i said uh, the 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 most important variable cost is server cost right if you yeah. have 100 million dau's you have to pay 100 million dollars to your cloud provider every year which is almost like 800 crores 800 crores so the first few years of building share chat we were we only cared about building this audience yeah. so acquiring the audience and retaining them and keep improving the algorithms to drive up time yeah. spent retention uh the first five years was that since then the last two or three years is when we started monetizing it yeah. so any social media company if you look at their yeah. trajectory first five years they they have to burn money because yeah. advertisers are not going to come for your thousand users yeah. they only come when you have hundreds of millions of users yeah. right so so i think we did that made all that investment and now is the time when we are uh, slowly ramping up uh, on the monetization so we have two revenue streams uh, ads and uh, yeah. micro payments uh both i think ads is about 3 years old micro payments is about 2 years old uh and we're scaling both of them uh th- october was the first month when our first product share chat achieved profitability okay so it was after 8 years of building that product is when we finally hit profitability because i think that that the biggest variable cost was covered and all the other fixed costs were yeah. covered uh moj is uh what we are trying to achieve in next about sure. mid of next year and by the end of uh, next calendar day the company will be sort of a bit of a given so that has been the trajectory that that we have been on yeah. uh i think we've also seen uh, macro change massively right like 2021 was like a like a peak of the party going <laughs> on uh, uh you had the most insane amount of yeah. uh, capital being deployed fed printing money snapchat was 100 billion dollars snapchat was 100 billion dollars uh, market cap uh, and i think 18 months ago the entire market shifted yeah. uh, fed started tightening increasing interest rates in us that had a huge impact yeah. in even india's venture capital industry right and i think we we sort of switched gears towards profitability yeah uh, and i think we've come a long way since then uh, we've managed to cut our uh, burn to by by 80% okay so i think in 18 months cutting burn by 80% is a huge sort of uh, change right in, yeah. in how your pnl looks so i think we're we're now on a good trajectory uh, with respect to uh, profitability and i think we'll we'll sort of continue growing from there got it and and uh, any uh, you know figures that you could share around revenue or users so we currently at about 1000 crore yeah. annualized revenue across both the products across both the products Uh, and what would share chart make how much share chart would own it uh, would be i would 60 40 in okay. favor of share chart 600 and yeah. 400 share chart is uh, so share chart is about 180 million mau's moj yeah. is about 120 150 got it uh, million mau's um so yeah, i think it's so share, therefore share chart because it was an older product yeah. sort of got to profitability faster and now moj will happen in about 6 months understood and do you think because social media is such a tough space to to get in Uh, we are not seeing more companies getting built in this space i think you did see a, a brief period where there was a lot of investment yeah. in social media and i think it's a cycle right so once you've had first wave of companies i think we turned out to be the one that sort of went yeah. the farthest right and it's time that we are now monetizing proving yeah. that this is a this is a model that i mean that works. We, we've been literally uh sort of busting the myths yeah. first one was social media shouldn't exist yeah. we sort of started in that <laughs> then there was like okay you can get the audience but you can't retain i think that was a very hard part where we had to invest in algorithms that we proved that you can yeah. actually retain the third myth was okay you've got a retained audience but how will you ever monetize yeah. this 2000 dollar per capita argument yeah. i think now we're sort of proving that as a myth and 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 doing that right? so i think we are de-risking along the way and that is that will give a lot of confidence to all the investors who have put in money here right and from here you will get the next wave of social companies coming in in the country yeah i tell us about the the journey you know because i remember uh, before, like when tiktok became such a viral product in mm-hmm. india that maybe you had an existential crisis back then 
man it was it was a very intense year uh, not just tiktok right uh, tiktok was not a competition yeah uh, so when bydance came in india i think first they tried which to which year can you uh, i think this is 2017 18 okay uh, when they first tried they were they were in fact they talked to us for investments and all of that uh, i think that so so what we got to know was one fine day uh, i wake up i get a message from one of my investors that bydance has launched a new product called hello okay h e l o i opened the app it looked like share chat even the content looked like share chat they had copied all the content and i asked my team we verified they had scraped all the content yeah. all the comments and we were like how could this happen like this is this is this can't be allowed right yeah. we in fact went to delhi high court if you can google uh, share chat versus uh, hello or bite dance in fact delhi high court told by told them to not do this yeah. not scrape and in fact change their app but imagine you are a founder you wake up one day and you find yeah. the highest valued private company in the world yeah. has copied your product it was 75 billion right yes of that order and and we like how do we sort of compete and yeah. they, they are they were putting 10 times more money just in marketing yeah. compared to our overall monthly bill yeah. and we like how do you even yeah. compete with that right so i think that was the most learning phase uh, i think they 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 copied us and all but we had immense respect for how they executed yeah they were hands down the most audacious ambitious company that i have sort of yeah. uh, competed with or seen right operating um and there was a, there was a lot of learning as well so what we learned in the first two years we had the exact same product right so you had a good yeah. ab test going on yeah. of sorts we we figured that we have much better product strategy product management community management yet whenever we launch a feature they somehow were able to crack better engagement on that okay and it just kept puzzling us like what are we doing wrong and i think we realized by the end of this year end of that one year of competition that in this sort of game of social media if you don't have world class ai world class algorithms yeah. nothing else matters you're not on the table playing the game if you don't have that capability i think that that made us much better they gave us much more understanding and i think uh, after tiktok sort of gone banned and hello also got banned but tell us about that story right how did it get banned what what led to its ban i mean they were uh, i i would say they were not very good at uh, managing moderation uh, engaging with the right authorities in general and there was a lot of content which was which should not be on a platform that was happening uh, on tiktok so i think that sort of led to the entire build up uh, and like we ourselves saw content like how could how could that be happening on a platform like that uh, and i think that that entire build up culminated with i think that that clash we had on the border between india and china right where government just like took a strong action and i think you'll probably see us taking that action now after several years india india sort of a a leader in that space to to be take strong bold actions on on things that could be long term detrimental yeah. to our society so i think that that mismanagement of content moderation and policy engagement just kept like build that entire foundation which i think uh, that that clash was the straw that broke the back do eventually. you remember the date when it got i think it was 29th july 2020 Okay. That would PM. have been a monumental day. <laughs> yes, 8 p.m. I was in my house when I got a call that this is happening. And we're like, what? I mean, we had, we had heard yeah. this news, but I'm like, as a new, it must be a rumor. Somebody would have said. Yeah. He said, no, it's an order. I'm like, even if it's an order, how would the government enforce it? Yeah. In 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 reality, government did not enforce. They themselves enforced it. So there is no technically there is no mechanism for the government to actually block an app. Uh, no, but google and apple can block they can blo- they can block the downloads yeah how do you block them from serving the feed yeah so in i, I think eventually within two or three days they self blocked themselves uh, from the uh-huh. country but uh, i think the moment we heard that uh, within one hour we had a new sort of project spawned in the in the company called project gold rush uh, where we moved the growth team of share chat and we told them that you have to build a short video app in two days uh and to my surprise they built it in 36 hours or 30 hours in fact and the entire team was like charging like an army like we used yeah. to have this ritual that you, uh, for the first for the first month of the launch it was all remote right so you would wake up open your zoom 
and there'll be a dow chart dau chart of both share chart and moj yeah. this going up like hockey stick and there's a background uh, music playing a very patriotic song yeah. that was the morning ritual for everyone so i think we did that uh, i think we got a lot of content bootstrap from share chart creators because they were also into short yeah. videos so i think that helped us launch moj the other fundamental thing we really believe was the hardest part of building that business is actually feed ranking it's the the algorithms that i was talking about right and we were the only indian company to have built that in fact as i said right the, the biggest learning we had competing with bytedance was build a world class ai algorithm or you don't have a place in this as a, game so as as a fact of matter you would say china has better ai algorithms than india today definitely definitely and there's no there's no question <laughs> about it uh they they far more mature ecosystem to like in in our narrow space of recommender systems this is uh, the specialization within ai which we sort of work on mm. they far ahead uh, of india and and i think we because of that learning and i think we had raised about half a billion soon after we decided we will go out and build globally best ai org so we'll go out build get the best folks out of meta twitter pinterest yeah. they are not in india none of these american companies have ever invested in ai in india in ai in india they've built their product teams sales team bd teams never their algorithm teams yeah. in the country so what is the reason i mean uh, i mean it's their investment philosophy one is you will have to invest in the talent so the phd's so, are not here yeah phd's and even if they're there you have to sort of train them so this you you only get good at recommender systems once you have been in the industry for 10 years yeah so and and you don't need a lot of people like you need hundreds of thousands of product managers you probably need i think 10000 great recommender system people for for a country of india size or and they had that in in london and in us right so they they so probably saw no reason to invest in the talent in the yeah. country to to build that up and therefore what we had to do was we actually went out uh and said we'll build this the like the most experienced senior most recommender system people yeah. in london us yeah. while the junior team would be in india and they will sort of that will be the team which will which will groom up to be the Correct. next leaders eventually and even today most of our ai leadership is out of london okay uh because i think that is that works really well from a time zone point of view uh so yeah, i think that that was a game changing move that we said that we have learned our lesson fighting with bydans uh if you you really you still while building moj and shejet you still fighting youtube and meta right and and twitter yeah. and everyone and they are again having the same capability so if we don't invest in it there is no 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 game for us yeah. longer term so i think that is when we build that team and that has been giving us a lot of return so a majority of our gains in retention time spent that we plan for an year ahead right it comes from our recommender system research that we're doing and we have been publishing papers i think we've been very public about how we're building it but majority of the gains and even for for meta right if you go yeah. and listen to their earnings call uh mark zuckerberg will will always mention ai and recommender systems to be the one of the strong focus areas for the company De- after decades of investing behind it so and sundar pichai mentioned ai i think 30 or 40 times in yeah. the last investor <laughs> call Yeah I think that is I think people are probably very very enamored by Gen AI yeah but the most sophisticated piece of technology powering Google search and all the meta products is the recommender system yeah that you're seeing and and I think the, the reason Gen AI is so in uh, in trend is because you're seeing this thing right so so what is chat gpt doing it is disrupting search where search essentially was a ranking and relevance problem out of a billion pages you give me a query i will rank them in the highest probability of click from that we are now generating a response still based on that but we are generating a response so in a way recommender systems are competing with gen ai where for example in in our world you can imagine today when you fetch a feed on share chat and moj we have about 100 million candidates from which we will find the 10 that you are most likely to complete the video watch so that is the uh essential thing we are doing so your user id i want to find the 10 videos with the highest probability of you full watching that's essentially the problem yeah. you're solving uh from there can we go to a world where i know let's say you are into baby cute baby yeah. videos i i sorry i know the i know the few cute baby videos that will work can i generate a video which is even more relevant to you so that ranking problem gets converted into a gen ai problem i think that is where the world is going so so 
I think India first needs to have a recommender system base which we are building to even sort of you can leapfrog into Gen AI, but I think it recommender systems are are one of the foundational things that runs internet today. Tell us about recommender systems in a very layman language for our audience. So, like, what are they? How did they get born? Who like sure, was sure. over in it, and how have they been growing over the sure. past? Sure. So, so the the fundamentals of how any social media product works, right? You take Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, anything. When you go on the product, uh, they essentially serve you content. Yeah. Uh, and their job is to find the ten most relevant content that will keep you hooked on. Yeah. The platform. now how do you sort of break that into a mathematical problem the 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 problem becomes when you come on a product how do you give me feedback yeah you give me feedback and, and let's take moz right because it's a very simplistic sort of product when you when a video comes on on your screen you either full watch that video or you like that video or you share that yeah. video or you comment on the video there are three four actions our job essentially is to predict the probability yeah any given user any given video how do i predict the probability that you will full watch it you will like it you will share it yeah this is a mathematical problem you build machine learning models that become better and better at predicting that yeah once you get better at predicting that whenever you come to moch i will give you better content and i will learn faster and that 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 part of predicting given user id and video tell me the probability mm-hmm. is called recommender systems and i think that started from a very simplistic sort of algorithm probably a decade ago to now very sophisticated deep learning based algorithms which try to find how do i keep improving my prediction probabilities so you you see all these large llm models in in public yeah. coming out right the only difference is recommender system models are all private so you, you don't see a public competition of people launching models but in 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 reality we work 6 months of an year to get to the next version of okay. the prediction model so we are fighting our own llm like like fa- battle with facebook but it is private it is not in public eye but it literally works the same way our engineers work 6 months work working on some cutting and re- cutting edge research to find the model which is slightly better at predicting for a given user id and video id will they complete the full watch and facebook is doing the same youtube is doing doing the same so this is a private company sort of warfare that is happening underlying what you see on on the front social media i think is is a part of it there is it's like an iceberg there's yeah. a huge sort of uh, back end engineering work ai work that goes into serving that product so yeah. in a nutshell recommender system is the set of algorithms that find the 10 best videos to serve you in your next feed fetch so so yeah to to just add to it for example newspaper is same for everyone hmm. right so so what if the goal of the newspaper was that it should be the news is dynamic yeah it changes for everyone and the goal of the newspaper becomes that the my user in every individual user should complete the newspaper yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that's like an it's ideal a, yeah, yeah. ideal newspaper yes yes and, and that's if you, what if every user could have a different placement of stories yeah. different stories altogether yeah. and your goal as a newspaper company was to make sure a person starts and finishes yeah. the newspaper how do you get better at that yeah. that is in a way of sort of putting it yeah so so why is then you know we never heard of recommender system but the world is mad about llms what are they what is generative ai why are they taking so much attention right now i think re- recommend i think you we can start with like what are llm full form and more about it yeah these are large language models which are essentially predicting the next word uh in a very simplistic term right for any given question they try to predict the answer and essentially uh the the, the next word that should come given a uh, preface yeah the reason they are sort of coming in the limelight one because i think recommender systems have been there for for a very long time 20 years uh, 20 years and we are essentially playing catch up in india that is why when you said right that in is india behind or ahead of china it's definitely behind uh, because we've never had companies like we are probably the most invested company to recommender systems in okay. india today uh, uh, and uh, it adds a lot of business value but it's sort of something that has been done in the us probably a decade ago so it doesn't get attention i think llms are very new the most cutting edge even for for us right because for the first time they are changing the problem statement it is not about ranking the content finding the most relevant content it is generating the most relevant content so as i said right chat gpt is competing with google search because google search finds the 10 most out of the known yeah. billion 
chat gpt learns the known billion and generates the exact answer you want yeah it turns the problem on its table on on, on its head that how do you generate the most relevant content it's not about a search problem it is about generating problem i think that paradigm of of compute is very new and when it it, it starts with text when it comes to media it will be even more magical so so today uh, a, a a live streamer for example uh it's a human which sort of comes on a live stream uh is probably helping you shop right you have yeah. a lot of these live commerce uh, happening the biggest cost there is the human cost yeah you have to train a creator you have to send the product you have to make yeah. all that happen right that entire fixed cost can be diminished to a fraction if it's generated by ai and and so a lot of business models that you see today right who are be, who have human in the loop yeah. who are ranking problems they essentially become generative ai problems so it will yeah. have impact across industries and we are only scratching the surface e- even short videos right you as i said if if our if our algo today finds the four most relevant cute baby videos for you the algos of future will not find those four will will create a new one based on those four in everything for, for every user a new video will yes. be created yes like for every single time you put a question on chat gpt it generates an answer for yeah. you every single time you open a short video app it will generate a video for you oh. and this is many many more use cases yeah yeah this is like this is <laughs> i want to watch a shahrukh khan movie a movie can specifically built for me yes yes i mean it, it, it you can stretch right then then it becomes a so if i type on a prompt let's say imagining if i type a prompt give me a shahrukh khan movie which combines love of ddlj action of jawan and pathan hmm. and mix combo hmm. right it it will build a movie for me yeah, yeah that is that is still a lot of input imagine you don't even have to put that input okay you are swiping videos i know literally which video you will want you will full watch okay so it's not even in prompt because if you look at uh, any short video app you get a feed right which keeps you hooked on for 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 30 minutes 60 minutes whatever right so there is some understanding that is already built in that you siddharth are into let's say baby videos i like yeah. i know for a fact because of your the way your your past usage right how do i generate a video which will make you full watch i don't need a prompt from you i can actually generate it on your behalf but then in in that case my first question is how is ai able to read human will able, able to read human mind right just because of past data right and human mind is very dynamic is able so, to generate yeah i think this is new the, desires on the fly this is the this is the probably the lesser talked about part of uh, how world will change right so today how do we get the input uh, when we are using any app right so i can tell you for moj we look at your full watch whether you've done yeah. it or not whether if you double tap you will like if you open the comment these are these are great inputs basis which we do all the learnings yeah. but if you think about it this is very low bandwidth crude input versus every video that you watch there is so much that goes in your brain you feel happy sad anxious yeah. whatever right i get a fraction of that with a double tap the input from a human to a machine or a computer is so low bandwidth so broken on top of that we've still built massive businesses which give you which can keep you hooked on for hours yeah. on 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 the product but imagine we if we had far more uh, insight into what you're thinking so if if i think if somebody solves that input part where what i'm thinking gets known by the app the algorithms can be far more powerful so when when you're saying right you want the exact same video which will make you happy at that moment yeah today i just have a double tap history of your uh, all the videos right it, it's good i can do a good job but if i really know how much sort of i can quantify how much happiness you had with every single video in the past i can guarantee you there's an algorithm which will predict the next video which will give you like the most euphoric happiness you have imagined and the, the the next question is can can ai uh capture human desire hmm what does it mean so for example let's say uh, my desires are dynamic right it doesn't need to come from past memory mm-hmm. to, right now i've eaten a paratha now i want an ice cream hmm so ai would not know right it it will just know my previous pattern that if i eat a pan or a rasmalai <laughs> then how would it know that i i want an ice cream i think but a desire capturing a unknown desire i know but i think humans are far more predictable than we think we are okay so i can tell you if you have 100 million people on your platform yeah 
you can find cohorts who after watching a uh, ice cream video watch x video and all of them do that if you show them that x like if the algo learns that after an ice cream video this kind of video really works that that property can be used to serve you the next video so humans are independent but as a whole when the algorithm looks at it they are very predictable uh, so you will have your desires but it will not be very off from there are about 1000 people in this world who would have the same desire as you right after that that previous desire so i think some part of that can be learned from other people if you have a large enough platform and you you see that happening on like even on moj right when the algos essentially learn your relationship yeah with the neighboring sort of 1000 people in fact uh every user on moj is trans trans like is translated or or we learn a vector embedding essentially every user every human in our database is a vector What of numbers vector, vector mean? it's like a array of numbers uh and we can actually tell who is that person who's closest to you in terms of I their understand. content preferences and it works like humans are very predictable okay. we we think we are independent but mm. for every single person on moj i can tell you thousand other people who think very similarly in terms of their content preferences so if this person gives me a signal of what they like i my probability of picking their next video goes by a very like significantly goes up uh so so i know what we are getting to like how do you map it to every single individual's humans i think that's a very hard problem but there's an intermediate solution where we can pattern match among yeah. people because still figure. right as we discussed uh, a human has to input into a computer either google search or a chat gpt give me what i desire yeah and for the next level of ai to evolve ai has to give it a human his desire without yeah the human input yeah i i i think the the this problem of human input to machine right it is one of the key parts to be that, solved that is getting solved right now i think neuralink is trying to do it there are few companies uh, that are trying to do it but i feel it, it, that th- this is a big missing piece in the puzzle yeah. not talked about enough but i can tell you just basis your double tap and full watch we can do so much on the algos yeah. imagine if we knew how you're feeling exactly at that yeah. moment algos will go crazy uh, to optimize your happiness you are making me feel scarier right <laughs> algos are going to take over the world <laughs> I mean, again, any powerful technology, you ha- you give it to bad actors and they'll do the bad things, right? So that that is true for any technology. Mm-hmm. I don't think algos per se are bad. How do you how do companies use it? How do people use it? Is is really how it will pan out? Yeah, and and tell us now, right? I want to dive in. What are the categories? Because uh, let's say if you have you are saying you have hundred hundred and eighty million uh, on share chat on, on share chat like eighteen yeah. crore of population yeah. out of the one forty crore population. Yeah. So you, we can say that it represents. india in a in a right way mm-hmm. so what are the categories that india loves to hear on internet listens to internet watches on internet hmm. maybe you can start like is cheap entertainment cricket bollywood politics what is that i think general entertainment is one which what what is general entertainment like general which means which movie, means ott what what dance videos lip sync videos uh festival wishes i mean festival wishes is a big thing in india yeah. uh that so i think th- that is broadly categorized as general entertainment surprisingly devotion is number 2 on okay. on share chat um, uh, i think we also have a probably a higher skew towards women than internet audience uh, and that sort of makes devotion bigger uh, then you have uh, your yeah, fashion beauty cricket all of that coming after that okay so out of the 180 million uh, monthly active users how many are men how many are women we would have about 70 30 70 men 30 women okay and that which is roughly about the internet split as well today and uh, even out, out of that which is the which are the top 3 or 4 cities that your user or towns your user come from i think top 3 would be chennai lucknow delhi i guess i think it's i've not sort of seen it in in recent past but these would be like in top 5 for sure and let's say which states would compromise the top 5 which states uh i think in terms of language hindi is biggest but hindi is spread out across many states yeah. right so one state would probably be tamil nadu okay we see tamil uh, having the highest sort of engagement rates uh penetration uh far more affinity even in tier 1 cities like chennai for their language yeah. 
so ttmk which is tamil telugu malayalam kannada south indian languages typically have the highest sort of penetration engagement and affinity for their local language after hindi uh, after hindi hindi in general is so large that if you just in terms of active users you hindi will be probably half of it but yeah. it is so widespread and the base is so large uh that it like in terms of, of a state or a city you will probably find south indian states to be the most appearing. active state on so, so hence it would not it would be the correct statement that south india is more active on internet than north india oh definitely why is that i mean just that the, their per capita is higher so in general the internet penetration if you look at it is among the highest in south india tell us about internet penetration overall as in india if you have to explain it so i think you will probably find the highest in kerala uh and and i think tamil the uh, karnataka andhra telangana uh, kerala these these will be typically much higher than the north indian states and you'll find the lowest among mp bihar chatisgarh uh, sort of states and internet penetration is the popul- the number of internet users divided by population, population of the states but and on a holistic level which state would have the highest number of users uh not penetration my, yeah but 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 just let's say if the by the number of user count yeah i mean i'm i'm taking a guess because i've not seen this data recently but should be either tamil nadu or kerala as a, as a whole even on the in- internet in by internet penetration no no there is one stat which is internet penetration yeah, yeah. the other stat is absolute number absolute you will probably have up even the okay. base is so large uh, i mean I, i'm guessing here right now but the base is so large that you'll probably get one of these up probably will, will come up okay but up us thing will be very low in internet penetration will be much lower than kerala tamil nadu god and but even with multilingual like you are uh, mm-hmm. in their own language in these they don't need to understand english it's just that the ability to buy a 2000 3000 thousand rupees star smartphone in a 100 rupees uh, data pack mm-hmm. that is even that is not the basic uh, availability in the state of uttar pradesh Yeah I mean it, it does follow the per capita it, it is very correlated to per capita okay. math and and for the for the exactly the same reason that you mentioned right it it takes some amount of fixed investment from an individual to be on the internet yeah and then some amount of opex of like 100 rupee recharge or whatever to stay connected on onto the internet so you will have a segment of people who are not sort of having that income to to not be on the internet and that happens to be a higher percentage in north india especially states like up bihar chatisgarh versus uh, kerala or tamil nadu today india you know we are seeing india rising india shining any any anecdotes that you want to give that yeah we are really here we have made it yeah i think we, we talked about the digital infra part right i think we are leading yeah. the the world uh, when it comes to digital payments identity yeah. common identity across the country um i think we therefore are seeing very interesting business models on built on top of that yeah. micro payments etc um i think one of the things that we did not anticipate but we are now sort of seeing is uh we we typically call like tier 1 cities to be uh, the one with with more disposable income yeah. and and tier 2 not to be the case but i think what we have seen on our platform is within every single city or state you have that that section which has the more disposable income right so you will find somebody out of uh lucknow raipur who's the top gifter or or micro payment uh customer on a live product spending north of 5 lakh a month wow so so within every city a digital disposable yes. income of an indian is 5 yes. lakh rupees a month no it's not for an individual but the top cohorts you see yeah. that happening yeah. and it is and we're surprised that this guy is sitting out of nowhere i mean some small city in up spending this much amount of money so so i think uh, this narrative that tier 1 is where all the in- disposable income is and tier 2 tier 3 is where you don't have is not the truth if you have a very widely distributed product in every single city you will find that top 5% with with all the disposable income they could have their family yes, business right. or whatever but it is in every single city in terms of absolute numbers probably you will find that to be more in tier 1 and therefore for a business model like a food delivery it makes sense to be in tier 1 right because you want the quantum yeah but for a digital product like share chat it, it that does not matter right if even if there are like 1000 people in a small city who have that income they can be spending that on on our platform so i think we are seeing that uh, in every single city you will find that pocket if your business model allows you to economically scale in that you will actually make money uh, in, in that sort of thing right so i think that is one of the learnings we've had 
especially after launching micro payments so that the, the, some people just have massive appetite yeah. to be spending uh, and they are invisible to to the uh, vc class uh, okay. who keeps discussing uh, tier 1 so for example like right, lot of it's, it's been a narrative in india that the product that you monetize in india for mm -hmm. example you beat flipkart cred all the e-commerce that is all targeted towards the tier 1 that's a wrong narrative i mean it was probably right till 5 years ago yeah. uh, we now have a significant significant population and you have to build a business model which sort of thrives on that yeah. you, you will on an average will get a lower paying capacity right yeah. and therefore i'm saying that our business model thrives on 1 dollar per year of input yeah. cost that much you can recover and and on top of that there will be certain like top 10% users will give you like like probably 20 dollars per year yeah so you'll subsidize the usage yes. of of other people via these people so i think it depends on the business model i believe social media is one of those business models which will thrive in a in a tier 2 tier 3 environment and uh, are you seeing some trends like you know uh, india has been dominated by trend of migration what i mean is people from bihar coming to tier 1 cities like bangalore mumbai people from up do you, because you 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 have you know the locations of the user are you seeing that still happening or there are opportunities getting created for these people even in those economically backward states and cities Yeah I think that's a good insight we should probably analyze there is a large part of uh, our audience or our tier 1 metro audience you would find people who have migrated okay so they will be in bangalore but consuming hindi content okay and therefore we have multiple language options right on the product because you a lot of times you see people being in states but using their hometown languages consuming that content uh so i i think migrate migrate like population that has migrated is significant especially in in yeah. metros but it will be a good exercise that we go back and see if that trend is accelerating especially with manufacturing coming up right yeah you would probably find more people nearer to those hubs migrating or or staying there right and not coming to necessarily delhi mumbai and bangalore that will be a good exercise if we for example one good exercise would be to see like what is the percentage of hindi consuming users in bangalore how is it has increased yeah, yeah. over a period of yes that that will be a good good one to uh, of time and uh, you know uh, the paying capacity of these users across uh, the micro payments right yeah like, like because yeah, th and that will be a good one we should we should actually go back and and see if <laughs> people consuming hindi content being in bangalore is that going up or going down yeah. over time that tells you the migration yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic and you you talked about manufacturing right are, are you seeing that trend come up where the new manufacturing hubs are getting built out the more of micro payments are there are increasing or any significant trend i mean we we keep hearing that in news but i think uh, i have friends who who are sort of building those startups helping manufacturing keep capacity building right i think one of the things i've been hearing a lot is two years ago or three four years ago most of the capex uh, to build these manufacturing capacities was actually government led it is more and more becoming more private okay and and whenever the capex is happening from private players you you typically have a higher confidence it's more sustained maybe it, maybe it is because of government schemes at the back end but the actual money deployed is by the private players So I think that's a good sign for the country where private players feel that there is money to be made uh, by investing in India. And one one more interesting question that I have one insight that earlier you know India has been a country dominated by uh, education. So if you don't have a good ed education, you don't have a career. That was mm -hmm. the narrative. Mm -hmm. You had either had to be doctor, engineer, lawyer, mm -hmm. or some of mm -hmm. these mainstream professions. Mm -hmm. Do you see that change? I mean that would have to change, right? If you have to give employment and actually get that demographic dividend, yeah, you will have to have jobs which don't require years and years of training, because you don't have that capacity of teaching or people paying to get be taught, and maybe jobs in in manufacturing sort of help that, right? With like within six months, you are ready to be productive for the economy. Uh, so I think you, you it, it is great that India should keep producing more doctors, engineers, scientists. but if you really want to exploit get that demographic demographic dividend out you want to have professions or jobs which don't need years of training which probably gets done in 6 months so imagine a guy who has not graduated he's 25 year old what are you going to do how do you make that person productive 
you have to have a profession which only takes six months and makes make that person productive, right? So you will need those opportunities for India to really get the benefit of its demographic dividend. And because you have learned from China, right? And that was a forceful learning for, mm-hmm. for you, right? What are your ob- other observations, right? Why is that country ahead of us? I think one, they were much early on uh, participating in in the whole yeah. industrial revolution, right? So they did leapfrog us, uh, and therefore built ecosystem. I think it is just about do you have the right ecosystem? So I think India today feels at the right juncture, uh, where I am hopeful that within ten years we would be much we would have closed the gap much more than where we are in terms of our abilities to build world beating products compared to China. Uh, and and therefore, for example, if you want, if you get a new opportunity uh, yeah. like LLMs, what do you need to build that in India? You need uh, a large or, or significant amount of talented people yeah. who are skilled. You want a capital ecosystem which can sort of fund that. You want a supporting ecosystem which can guide the founder, uh, tell tell the obvious mistakes, and eventually uh, a, a large enough public market to sort of help with the liquidity. Yeah. I think we are far in a far better position today versus five years ago. Or when you started. Or right? when, when we started, right? So so therefore, China is ahead, but it is ahead for reasons that we are now solving as a country. Okay. And we should be getting closer and, and bridging that gap uh, over, the, over the five, ten years. So I am, in fact, very, very optimistic that today a person starting up has far more stars aligned than we had. In 2015. And, and that's a very interesting anecdote that you were punished in your college for starting yeah. a startup <laughs> almost 10 to 11 years ago. And today's like my, it, it was not a, a very popular decision to be IIT Kanpur computer science graduate with I had a very good CGPA dropping or not going to placement and starting up. It was a very, very unpopular decision. Uh, today, if you do that, I think it's it's not unpopular. People will be like, okay, pe- like kids these days do startups, so why not try? But I think it, in my time, I was uh, some of my well wishers were offering me that they thought I could not get plays, so I have I have some referral in TCS. I can get you there. Okay. I'm like I'm doing a startup out of my own will. If it doesn't work, I'll go to any of the large MNCs, tech MNCs, and work there. But I want to give that time to myself to actually try building something. And because you have built such a large company, uh, right? You have more faith in India than you had in 2015 when you started up? I mean, 2015, we were, I didn't know anything, to okay. be very honest. Uh, I was not a, as keen an observer of macroeconomics and, and how the country is doing. But I think we, I've, I think over the time, as as uh, we have matured as a company, as founders, right? So you start reading into how things, how the world operates. I would say that... Uh, Knowing what I know, I am far more optimistic on on India uh, than any time before. Thank you so much, Angush. Loved our conversation. Thank you. (laughs)